this session we'll pull together a couple of concepts from earlier sessions. We'll take a disease causing variant in a gene and then we'll compare the native sequence of the protein encoded by the gene with the version of the protein encoded by the variant sequence and we'll see if we can use protein structure prediction to identify any possible significant changes that the variant may introduce into the structure of the protein. There were a number of steps that were done in preparation for this project. First of all, we created the native protein sequence, either by translating it from the DNA RefSeq sequence or by downloading it directly from the RefSeq protein area. Next, we had to identify a disease-causing variant using either OMIM or ClinVar or another resource. In these examples, we use the deletion of phenylalanine at position 508 in the CFTR gene. Finally, we took the native protein sequence for CFTR and then introduced a change into that protein sequence. In our example, we deleted the amino acid, the phenylalanine, at position 508. Other examples could be replacing one amino acid with another. For example, in order to create a variant sequence, we open up the CFTR protein sequence in Seq Builder. We scroll down to position 508 find that position, we highlight it, we verify that we have the correct position 508, in our case we just delete it. And then we choose save as, and we create a new file with a naming convention that reflects the change that we made. Select the laser gene protein format in order to make the other exercises easier. And then we did a Dell 508, so we'll use that naming convention. And then you save your file. Now you're ready to move forward. So now let's open Protein 3D. First we'll open the native CFTR sequence file. And then we'll open the sequence file with the variant in which DEL 508 was removed. Each of these will receive its own tab in Protein. Now we'll spend some time zooming in so that the region between amino acid positions 500 and 510 is clearly visible in both the native and the variant protein sequence file. So this takes a little bit of navigation, but it will be very helpful as we get into the actual comparisons. So we'll do that work with both files, as you can see above. And once we reach a good level of resolution, then we can start comparing. In order to do that, an easy trick is to detach the analysis window. So we detach each of them, as I'm showing here, and we'll detach the other window and now we can start to overlay them as we look at the results of the various analysis algorithms. So we'll try to get our windows lined up and again it takes a little bit of manipulation but as you can see here we're trying to line up the regions so that the two um, screens show positions 500 through 510 in a manner that we can visually compare the results of the algorithms. So once we finally make some progress on that, then we're going to expand the views for the different algorithms for secondary structure analysis. We'll focus in this example on hydrophobicity. So I've expanded that view, and now I'm scrolling back over to the region of interest between 500 and 510. So you can see the hydrophobicity analysis for the variant protein sequence. Now I'm going to go up and do the same thing with the native protein sequence. So again, I slide over to the main view, I expand the secondary structure analysis, and then I also expand the hydrophobicity analysis. Once I do that, I scroll back over to the region between 510 and 500, and try to superimpose them so that they're pretty well aligned with one another. So after doing a little bit of visual comparison, there's one thing I noticed. It's this hydrophobicity stretch. So right here in the native sequence, there's a stretch of hydrophobic regions. But when I look at the similar region in the variant sequence, I notice a break in that comparable area. So this suggests to me that perhaps deleting the phenylalanine at position 508 introduces a break that you see here in a hydrophobic region. 
In this brief example, we've seen how using two different protein sequences, one with a variation, and then comparing those in an application that supports protein structure prediction, we can begin to gain insights into how a variant may be associated with the disruption of the protein structure and potentially how that could cause disease.